Hey everyone, welcome back to Wonderland Wednesday. Today we have something really different and really special. We found a different, I found a different version of Alice in Wonderland. One that I don't think is even listed on Wikipedia because I'd never heard of it before. But I found a mention on a blog about a 1927 version and I followed a couple of links and I found this version on the, I think the University of Washington's archive page. I don't know. They had this thing, this reel of film in their archives and they had it available for download. This isn't even on YouTube. It's sort of a play, but they've recorded it and sort of turned it into a movie, like a silent film with little subtitles and things. Um, it's not the most faithful adaptation, but I think what we found more interesting was the history mm -hmm. of it. This takes place out in the forest, and it's like a forest theater. It's called the Kitsap Forest Theater, and I guess maybe it still exists because they have a whole website. Yeah, it says theater inspired by a magical place, so I would assume this is just a really old production. It's a series of three clips, mm -hmm. and they have a whole page on the website talking about the production and how many people came and who ended up getting married in the cast. It's really neat. It was funny. We both laughed. They had a phrase. They said there was an epidemic of matrimony after the after the production was over, and we found that phrase really funny. So definitely look that up. Read that page. Look at their little photographs. They mm -hmm. show people that came to see the play, and it's a really crazy photo with just hundreds of people. One of the productions they put on, 600 people showed up. I mean, that was probably maybe my favorite part of the footage was just mm -hmm. seeing all of the regular people showing up in the garb of the time wandering it's, down it's to the really forest. a snapshot of history very cool <coughs> i definitely recommend it for historical value mm -hmm. i'll put a link to that in the description below it's really worth looking at they have links to all the video clips you can watch them yourself too it's really worth it, even even if the story isn't uh, that faithful. We enjoyed it just for what it was, what it represented in history. If you love vintage, yes, definitely. And can I do a rabbit trail? Yes. Rabbit trail. Uh, I'll try and restrain myself. <laughs> this is the twenties. Is such a misrepresented decade in fashion. It would be like everybody thinking that everybody in the 60s was a hippie and flappers were a minority of the population. So if you want to get a little snapshot of what some of the regular people were wearing, not the really wild hip crowd, <laughs> this is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. You really see people of all ages in the clothing yes. of the times. It was really interesting. And the hairstyles, yes. Mm -hmm. But good period to read up on. But that's that's me. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> like we said, there wasn't a whole lot of sticking to the story. It opened like with fairies dancing around in the forest. So you know right away that this isn't going to be the most faithful adaptation out there. No, they really, they tinkered with it, but in this one, I don't really care. Mm -hmm. It's just so neat to see oh, the people, um, some of the costumes. The Duchess was definitely a favorite of mine because they gave her this really exaggerated outfit with the flowing pieces of fabric and a really long string of beads but it was almost like a take on somebody that might have been uh, maybe artsy at the time mm -hmm. and it was just fun she had a giant head but it wasn't hideously grotesque like and some of the other ones it was kind of like a paper mache doll or something the really fun part is her costume and she mm -hmm. really got into it Alice, I wish that I could have seen her hair more closely. Her costume was interesting, but her hair was really the showpiece because she has this long brunette hair, but
but she has those little crinkly waves, not wild waves, you know that they were put there on purpose. And she has this really interesting headpiece. It looks very detailed and it's large and I wish that I could get a better look at it. I may have to Google headpieces now, but it really added an interesting dimension to her look. The white rabbit was a little bit odd. He just, he had an interesting little prance. That he, he, was a, he was very prancy the whole time. He was just sort of prancing around instead of hopping. He's sort of a gentleman in white pants, and he's just really getting into the role. He was kind of cute. Mm -hmm. It was kind of funny, though, too, at the end. For some reason, they decided to throw in that the white rabbit and the duchess get married. They're, they're going to get <laughs> married. He offers to marry her. It was really random and not true to the book at all, but I found no. it funny. And I'm assuming with these as well that they really didn't include all of the dialogue that's going on, so they may have mm -hmm. been truer to the book than we realize. They were just sharing a little bit of what happened there, but to really catch it, I think you would have had to be there. Mm -hmm. It would have been interesting to see what colors they used too. In the royal court, um, they didn't just have cards. They did have ladies with sort of card motif on their dresses, but really flowing gauzy sleeves that were fun. And the queen, she had a train that somebody had to carry. So they really got into the costuming. They sort of had snapshots from the book and snapshots of characters. And they did have the trial, which is where the rabbit and the duchess get together. And one of the truest things is she says, you're nothing but a pack of cards. And then people just, the cast sort of flees off into the forest and then she laid down and they had a little card you know asleep she's not dead <laughs> she's just sleeping next to this giant mushroom that they made which is another thing they made giant mushrooms for this mm -hmm. so much so with so much detail that there were people coming to watch it that were actually confused and thought they were real mushrooms and then a little fairy comes along and tells her to wake up and then she scampers off into the woods and then it's on to behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting to see the behind the scenes because you can see the people in and out of costume, like have the people with the costume on but without the head. Right. And it was it was really interesting to see what the people underneath these giant bulky animal costumes actually looked like. Well, and also to see them hamming around a little bit. The guy who was playing the rabbit was like staying in character the whole time, like scratching his nose. He and looked was... like he was doing a little grooming. He yeah. had one mitt on and one free hand, one man hand out in the open. And it's just, oh, I'm a he rabbit. was really I'm method rabbit. acting in this part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, another great little historical snapshot. Not all of the film is super clear. Like I say, I would have liked to have gotten a better look at Alice, but really fun. And they mm -hmm. even have, it looks like, I don't know if it's a guy filming or taking photographs of the cast, but he's out there in what looks like a little sweater or cardigan. And it's just, uh, it's, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. If you love vintage, if you love history, or, you know, maybe a grandparent or great-grandparent was alive at that time. I know my grandma wouldn't have even been one years old when this happened. So it's really interesting to think about that perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's all for today. We're planning on watching a version from the 80s next. It was produced by the BBC and a lot of the people who worked on the show Doctor Who back then. And it looks like it's actually a pretty good production. And the thing that I read said that they stayed really true to the book. So we're, we're looking forward to watching that one. I've seen very little Doctor Who, but I figure if they've done Doctor Who and they're staying true to the book, they are qualified to do such an odd story. Yes. I am looking forward to it. So we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.